front end on this is incredible. My Cayman probably would go round a corner faster, but this handles better. Yeah. It feels like a muscle car, which is weird to say because it's not a muscle car at all. But... Hello there! <laughs> Welcome to another video from Max Revs. We're not in a Porsche Cayman. We're in a Lotus S220. That's 220 brake horsepower and about 920 kilograms. And this is a phenomenal car. We've got Josh over here. Josh used to own a 981 Cayman Sport, a real popular video on this channel. We released it last year in lockdown. I'm shouting because I've got no idea if the audio is going to come out. Um, I've always loved the Cayman um, ever since they came out, the first generation of them. Um, I think the, the shape of them and everything are absolutely amazing and the also the size of them. Um, I live down the New Forest, on the edge of the New Forest and the roads aren't particularly big, so it's the perfect size um, for, for, for the roads that I drive on. Um, doesn't really warrant having a huge horsepower bigger vehicle. I've had M3 E92s um, and stuff like that, M3s, and um, they're just a little bit too big, to be honest. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. You all right, Max? Oh, yeah. You know what? It's great. Sunny weather, open top, and um, we were just sort of talking off camera a little bit. There's a lot of reasons why this car is on this channel, because it ticks a lot of the boxes that you get in a Cayman. I've had lots of cars, been into cars for many years, um, and as I've got older, I've changed tastes, changed needs, you know, um, of what I wanted. Um, but yeah, I've had lots of hot hatches, um, modified most of them, um, mostly engine and, and uh, suspension work, really, trying to make them better drivers' cars, really. Um, and um, yeah, yeah, loads of, been very fortunate to have lots of different different things. Nothing, you know, that swanky, but I, I liked them at the time, yeah. what I could afford. Um, and enjoyed them loads. So yeah, my I had the 981 Cayman S that was on your channel, which I absolutely loved. A um, few reasons why I, I ended get, getting rid of it, mainly down to cost, really, because of the worry of lockdown, COVID, everything was going on. And you know, say like I said before, I'm you know I'm not a millionaire. Um, I pay for everything that I've got, and it was a lot of money tied up in in that. And I didn't know I, I run a small business. Um, and you know that's that's sometimes you've got to make those choices you yeah. know then so that's what I had to do. We were coming out of some roundabouts so we weren't even doing at speed but the composure the levelness I, I felt it actually felt more composed than a GT4 because you're lower and I, I felt there was less spring travel I mean you better, you better get your flame suit on I think. <laughs> <laughs> but a Lotus is, is designed principally I think for a certain purpose. It is. They're very, they are more compromised. You know, the, you know, the, 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 the Caymans, the GT4s, everything like that, they are possibly, in my opinion, you know, one of the best all-round cars yes, yeah. you can buy. I love the exposed gear shifter. I'll get you some footage of this car on the inside, but it's it's a very stripped down car, but, but basic's the wrong word. I think it's very purposeful. Yeah, that's, that's why I think the original um, the Lotus Elises were, they were a lot more stripped out than this, didn't have any, particularly any creature comforts or anything, and that's why I was very um, keen to get one of, 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 of the later ones, because they do have all the nice and bits and bobs um, on yeah. that I would want. Do they call this extended leather? What, what's the option? Um, you've got leather in between, yes, and then you've got yeah. the Alcantara pack, which is like the yeah. seats and stuff like that, and then the um, contrast stitching, obviously, yeah. polycoloured stitching, which in Porsche land would be like probably 10 grand, <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's quite a nice spec. One, it's got. I think it's got the touring pack, okay. which is basically um, you get carpets, which is how you know that's yeah. that's how crazy it is that you have to pay extra for carpets. <laughs> um, and it also had. It didn't have the stereo option, so you basically had only two front speakers, and that was it. So okay. I had to put some rear speakers in so I could actually hear the music. Wow. But again, you're not buying this car for that. Well, like, when you got into this car, when you first bought it. Like, a, a, what were you looking for? What made you go Lotus Elise? And then, when you kind of got the car, what would, like, say, the first three things that stood out in your mind? Um, the reason why I got it, um, because I couldn't find a Honda S2000. <laughs> so, you've had two of them before, I've haven't you? I've had two of them before, but they are, anyone who's driven one, in anger, that is, because they're a normal day-to-day -day driving, they're pretty pants, to be honest. Okay, really? You know, they're- what, what, Why would you say that? Like, no talk. They got no talk. Okay. They're quite loud. They're quite hard. They're older. Do you know what I mean? A good friend of mine had a Lotus Elise S1. He had it for years. Always, we've been out on various drives together. Handles amazing. 
um, you know, and he's, he's always, he's got a Lotus um, Evora now, which okay. is, is a lovely car. Um, and yeah, he, he's always, you know, said you should sort of look into him. So I started looking into him and then, you know, for not that much more, I could get into this. Yeah. It was, you know, another third more, obviously, yeah. about 33. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? There we go. Let's give him away. It's a lamp. I see, there we go. No, no way from him. <laughs> <laughs> we just wave to a Ferrari driver. The, the Lotus drivers always wave back, don't yeah. they? <laughs> it's how it makes you feel, and um, I, that's why I like the S S two thousand as well because you, you, you know, you can you can have fun at, at sensible speeds, and that's the same with the base base Cayman yeah. as well. And to be honest, you know, even the nine eight one Cayman S and the GTS, you know, they're not that fast. Yeah, you know, they, yeah. compared to modern day stuff. They're not that fast Correct. anymore. Correct. It's the thrill of the experience, and I think it's the same way people pick manual over PDK. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, you could or just get a 911 turbo with PDK, and put your foot down. You know, yeah. But I think there's less fun in that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, yeah, I did miss. I had obviously the PDK in my um, 981, and I did miss. I, it was a weird thing. I was, I, I was sort of still on the fence, completely with it. I missed the um, interaction of having a manual gear shift. But I love the drama, because there is drama from yeah. having those paddles. Yeah. I felt like yeah. I was a racing driver, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And when you're flicking, flicking through the gears with the paddles, it was, it, it's still, it was still really good fun. I love to get past this guy. There we go. That's nice. We'll have to bring you a picture of the, the digital dash in here, because like, Josh has actually put in an aftermarket DAC Speedo. See, that's beautiful. Very confidence inspiring, yeah? Yeah, it's nice, nice, easy to drive. Would you say the damper travel is quite short on this car? There is quite a bit of damper travel. When you, I expect you'll do some outside shots of the car, yeah, and yeah. It, although it's a whole low car, you've still got quite, it's not like the wheels to the arch is okay. not that, yeah. you know, you've still got quite a big gap, so that gives you, you know, you've got obviously got damper travel. But the GT4s and stuff like that, are, you know, they, you're talking, yeah. they're right on the arch, yeah, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, there yeah. is, you know. Um, but again, a GT4 down a super smooth road or on a track will probably absolutely yeah. smash this because uh, that's, you know. Yeah, but oh, so disclaimer, obviously we're still Porsche fanboys, you know, we still love the Porsches, but I think there's nothing wrong with an honest debate, especially from someone that's had a Cayman and now no longer has a Cayman. Yeah, I think every car has its merits, doesn't it, one yeah. way or another. And, um, you know, if I could afford a GT4, then yeah, I'd, I'd love one, um, but I can't. The best Cayman is the one that you've got and you can afford. Yeah. The best car is the one that you can afford without worrying about the payments on it. Yeah, like that's that. it. I mean, some people don't don't worry about it. They, um, you know, people are in different situations, different stages in their life, you know, and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, right now I'm super happy with this. And, and every right to be, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it would be great. I don't know if we'll even get a chance today. We might put you in my Cayman and then just get to see how you find the handling comparison on the same day. Oh, by the way, thanks for the T-shirt, Stephen, from Melton Mowbray. Thank you. I put it on. So, yeah, cheers for that. So, I'm in the driver's seat of a Lotus Elise. Yeah, oh, mate. So, I'm just going to, before I even say anything, I just want to, like, soak it up a little bit. The shift is amazing. So you said you waited to get this shift, yeah? I specifically wanted one, the last iteration, which is the S3, with this um, open wow. shifter in it. I tell you what, I mean, it's, it's, it's not even Porsche short shift. It's, it's, it's shorter than that. So these are my first impressions behind the wheel of a Lotus. Don't flame me, I'm just very excited today. The sun's out and it's the first open top car I've been in. We're in the New Forest, the landscape is stunning, okay? And I've got to say, it's just great talking with cars, with guys who are passionate about their stuff. You know what, I love the clutch. So the clutch on this, the travel is super... The brakes, the brakes are quite, you have to push them down a lot to make them work. There we go. They're quite unassisted. It's a good thing you're telling me yeah, that yeah. before I need them. <laughs> they're good. I see what you mean, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. you do have to, they're not very assisted. Yeah, and, I, and it, the biting point is not as linear, I'd say, as the Cayman. Right. As in, it, as in it comes in a bit later. Yes, yeah, yeah, there's a bit of travel before. Yeah. I mean, this is just a standard steering wheel, but it's way smaller than mine in the Cayman. Yeah, they are super small. Yeah. yeah. And I think that the reason that I think it was great to feature this car is that it ticks a lot of boxes as to why people buy a Porsche Cayman. Like, let's say, ideally, we live in sunny California, you've got great weather all the time, 
you're not too worried about driving in the wet conditions and this is your only car. The boxes I were looking to tick, two-seater, mid-engine, feel and communication with the road. And that's a bit like why I still like my 987 over like the more modern cars. It's a bit more raw. Um, I haven't really given the wheel a lot yet, but certainly around the centre position, it doesn't feel that it's unassisted. I mean, you'd probably get that more on the corners. Around. There's no play in it, is no. there at all? Every, you know, you move it a millimetre, it moves a millimetre. Um, Actually, I've got to say it loads that. Up. When, when you put it to corners in a minute, it loads up lovely. Yeah. Then you, you will feel, you know, the unassisted of it. But you're right. So in terms of play, I mean, I had my kind of bushings checked out and stuff, but yeah. this is probably the first car I've driven where I gen it's the least amount, and by play, I don't mean there's something wrong with the car. Yeah, I know what you're about, because in my 981, you could move the steering wheel ever so, ever so slight. slightly, yeah. and you wouldn't move. Correct, correct. And that, that you don't have that in this. Yes, it's, you exactly. move the steering wheel, which again, is great for a car that you use on the odd occasion like this yeah. as a bit of fun but it becomes wearing if you're on a motorway because you're constantly yeah. it, I, i'd definitely say it's confidence inspiring yeah it's got a lot of grip yeah see what the brakes are like it, it, it reminds me a little bit a bit i i'm beginning to think how assisted the brake pedal is on the cayman as in not in a bad way no. but you can tell this is just raw physics like yeah. I, I love the lights on your dash as well. Yeah. <laughs> there is no play. For a, a, like a Caymans and probably most all modern cars, that they build that probably a little bit of play into it because yeah. then it, you don't have to keep adjusting it all the time. Okay. You know. Wow. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the, there wasn't anything wrong with my 981. And, um, Correct, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I did notice, yeah, as, as I gave it some and then took my foot off. It, the revs must drop pretty quickly because you obviously felt that. Yeah. Or maybe I didn't shift it quick enough, but like. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think a smaller engine, you know. Still love my Cayman though, but I, so I, what? I need to get into a Spider because the open top feeling for me. Would you say that when you? I mean, I know you've only recently had the car, but is it more of a top, no top on the car driving experience? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, that's one of the appeals to the of the Elise for me um, as having the open top because. It makes it, you know, I use, I'm fortunate enough to have it only to use when it's nice weather. So it's lovely having the roof off when it's nice, I think, you know, uh, and that's why, you know, I, I, I still really, really like the, um, the spiders, the poor spiders, because, yeah. you know, you get the best of everything, you get that yeah. flat six, you get, get everything, but again, it's, it comes down to, comes down to money and, and price, yeah. really. This is fantastic. Well, listen, we're enjoying life and cars to the max. I want to save a bit of battery power in the cameras for when Josh gets into my car. So we're going to turn the cameras off now. We'll get him into mine and we'll just try because he hasn't driven the 987 and I think his Cayman was PDK. So we'll get him to see my gear shifter after this one and we'll bring you his feedback shortly. So we'll see you in a bit. Bye. We'll I've driven a manual Cayman, okay. not the not the 987 okay, one. I've always steered clear from the yeah. older rubbish models. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy life, guys. That's it. That's the end of the video. <laughs> Before we get into my car, yep. is there any sort of uh, preconceptions that you might be thinking about? Oh, okay, steering's not going to be as good as this, or the you know, like what, what would go through your mind? Um, I think the sound is going to be better. Okay, hundred percent. I, I don't think. I think the steering is not going to be anywhere near this steering on this, yeah. but it's going to be better than my 981. That's only going from what other people have said, because I think yours is hydraulic, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Whereas mine was on the 981 is is, is electric. Um, I personally didn't feel that the um, steering feel on my 981 was that good. I've got a little Fiesta ST 180, and I think that's got better steering feel than than my um, my thingy. Oh no, get the flame, get the, get the flame suit out there ready. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I, yeah, I wasn't that, you know. But but as an overall package, I loved my Cayman, um, and so yeah, with, with regards to yours, yeah, it's going to be very different. I think it's going to feel bigger and heavier. Yeah. But yeah. then it's bigger and heavier. Yeah. We've gone from the lease to my Cayman, and immediately our head distance to the floor is a mass. It's gone up dramatically, you know. Yeah. Um, even you, you were calling out the massive height difference, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it just feels big, and it's not a big car at all. But it, it, it's all a perspective thing, isn't it? Correct. Where, it's where all you, relative. Where you, yeah. yeah, relative. Where you yeah. come from. It feels like a muscle car, which is weird to say because it's not a muscle car at all. But compared to the Elise, <laughs> that's very interesting. It feels like a muscle car because you can, you, you feel that 
big old engine behind you yeah. wafts wafts of torque, which oh, yeah. again is not generally what you would hear from a Cayman because they're not that torque rich, yeah. are they? Yeah. I mean, it's the first time I've driven, you know, 987, and it's 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 it's, it's a Porsche. It's lovely. Every yeah. Porsche is a is a is a nice Porsche. Yeah. yeah, you can give it open up that tap. Oh yeah. My 981 um, sports exhaust, factory yeah. sports exhaust, is, I mean, it's, I would say it's probably louder than this. Uh, oh, at these revs, really? At okay. these revs, yeah, well, from memory, that is. Okay. And obviously, you got you get a lot of crackles and burbles, which isn't the exhaust, as he says, the ECU tune, isn't it, on it? I've said about four, the beauty of a Porsche, it's, it fits so many occasions. Yeah. My Elise doesn't fit, it's definitely more singular in its use. I mean, I can't get over how high we've ridden. I mean, you've got to do it back to back from the Elise to this one, but we do, I mean, even I feel we're riding really high, but I've never felt that in my car. No. Like, I come out of our family Honda and I think I'm riding quite low. Yeah, yeah. Sounds quite nice through there. <laughs> yeah, I think the overriding thing has been said loads. This is definitely more a car that you can use on lots of occasion. Um, steering nowhere near as the Elise, but that's a given. Obviously, it's a lot heavier, so it doesn't feel so um, direct or pointy or darty or engaging. But it does the key things really well still. Yeah, I, I think what I'm sort of taking away from this now, now that I'm sort of thinking about it a bit more, is that everything's relative. And I think if you were to pick a single car to give you driving dynamics, engagement, thrill, yeah. motorway journey, cruises, you know, that, that's where I see the Cayman working is your, you know, it, it, it sort of ticks all of them boxes. Yeah. Yeah, both lovely cars. And, and I can see how you can appreciate the finer points in both. Yeah, yeah, like, like I said off camera, it's, you know, I don't, I'm not one to bash anyone's car or why they have it or why they like it, because in d different, you know parts of your life stages of your life you want different things or need different things and can yeah. afford different things so it's right for you at that time isn't it yeah. so no car's perfect is it you know and there's things that i like love about this or the caymans or porsches in jet in in some ways that i don't like about lotuses you know same same as every car manufacturer but i think there's quite a lot of parallels i'd say uh, timeless looks yeah uh, driver focused cars yeah and I, I genuinely believe they're both driver focused we're just talking about how much you want to turn that dial up yeah because as you turn it up with a lotus you lose what this has so i, th I think it's the comparable conclusions they're both oh, yeah, great definitely. Cars. i think someone yeah. in the market for a sports car is going to have you know those on their list aren't they yeah you know so that shows that they are comparable definitely it's a beautiful car josh you know it's a beautiful car i don't think i would be as a summer car, when the weather's like this, I don't think I'd miss that much from a Cayman. I mean, no, I think that's the key, isn't it? It's it's a very um, car that's built for one purpose: yeah. to have fun in the summer, correct, with the roof off. Yeah. Um, whereas a Cayman's, you know, it's a different proposition. You can use it all the time. Yeah, indeed. That's that's the beauty of the Cayman. The key point there is overall package. Is yeah. That if if I was going to pick a one-trick pony, as mm. it were. I think I'm still gonna probably go Cayman. Get you know? out. <laughs> no, no, but you've 100%. got another car. You've got another yeah, car. Yeah, 100%. You know, I'm very fortunate enough to not, yeah. you know, to have used this for what its intended use is. Yeah. Not massive motorway miles or anything like that. It's yeah. to enjoy on a sunny day down lovely country roads in my local area, which is the New Forest. Yeah. Um, whereas a Cayman, you can use it. For, for everything. Um, I mean, so we just about fit my camera gear in the, just, in the boot at the back, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and we had to take the roof out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if it rains, which it won't today, we'll be in trouble. So I'm just about 20 miles into my journey home, and this is why I think the Porsche Cayman is such a fantastic car. I'm driving home on the motorway now, I've got 100 odd miles to do, and I feel a lot better doing that in my Cayman than the Elise. The Cayman is a great car, every Cayman is a great car. The Elise is a great car for sunny days, when you can basically take it out and it's not your only car but I think for me the Cayman and this is what I couldn't kind of represent or quite comprehend driving around those back roads with the Josh the Cayman is a car you can have as your one car that basically ups up to 10 as much as possible all the great things you want in a car without much of the compromises enjoying life and cars to the max see ya